Oh, fuck it. Did you record this? Want to see me re-release the same game? You want to see me do it again? You want to see me do it again? I haven't played. So, okay. So for that to happen, it Skyrim has it, it's got to be really, really good or something, huh? A lot of video game remakes as of late of games from my childhood. Yeah, no, Last of Us did it too. Childhood and stories that I'm experiencing for the first time. No, no, no. This game was video game remakes as of late of games from my childhood and stories that I'm experiencing. This no, what 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 was the other game? Chat, what's this game called? Is it Dead Space? What's the other game though? There was another game that we played. Okay, so this is Dead Space. There was another game that came out that was like like this. Cause Cal Callisto. I think that was a really, really good game. For the first time. I don't think it's unreasonable to say that we're currently going through an age of remakes, and not just for video games. Movies. Many giants like Disney have been digging up the graves of every one of their major IPs to see just how much money they can beat out of them. Not to mention, most of these stories were already derivative of existing folk tales to begin with. But you can't just re-release the movies, you gotta add a little something new. So classic films are remade into live action. I made a video But it's like, that's, it's, it's literally still the same though. It's literally still the same. And I'm not gonna lie. When they were talking about the new Aladdin, and then they had Will Smith as the genie, I love Will Smith. But I was like, bro, nothing can, you know, you can't outdo um, Rob, Robin Williams. But I'm not, it's, it was still, it was still cool though. Like I, I did, I still like the movie though. And it's like, I hate that I liked it. Cause it's like, they just need to stop doing, just make some new shit, bro. Just make some new shit. I like Inside Out. I even like Frozen. Just be like, can we just get some new shit? Several months back about live action adaptations and why so many of them end up falling flat. While some of the criticisms I made in that video still carry over to games, video game remakes function very differently than other media. With old video games, you don't just need a physical copy of the game, but also compatible hardware to be able yeah. to play it, which makes for an additional barrier to entry for people who- Like I could never, I could, well, I could probably find a way to play Croc now on like but even recording shit like i had to literally get a whole playstation 3 oh chat i know we were talking about like transformers but really i yo i want to get that blitz game yeah emulation but i always have issues with emulations bro i want to play blitz uh blitz one and two like the like the story why are you saying ggs bro i hear i like bro i like tra i'm not gonna lie transformers is it's, it's like i don't know bro they, they, it needs to give me more. It's, it, it needs to give me more, bro. And check out older titles. Sure, you could hop online and buy a Dreamcast or NES, but having to purchase a whole system if you only really want to play a one game or two is a bit much. There's a greater precedent to re-release games on modern platforms to make them accessible to a larger audience. Yeah, I finished Alien Isolation. I just, I didn't post it and preserve those titles. Otherwise, they'll just be lost to time. Remakes aren't a modern invention. Most early home console releases were just games taken from the arcade. Arcade cabinets were much more powerful than consoles back then, so the games had to be redesigned to run on weaker hardware. Nowadays, we just call that a Switch port. Major players in the arcade industry like Konami and Capcom would have a ton of their games thrown onto a cartridge for home consoles. It was a simple and efficient way to fill up a console's library. While re-releases are great for accessibility, there's also no denying that it's easy money. I mean, what's the alternative? Coming up with something fresh and original? As console hardware caught up to the and, arcade and people cabinets, not liking there was it? less downgrading games from the arcade and more titles being released straight to console. But the re-releasing never stopped. Because it's like, you got to think, it's less, that's why I understand why they do it. And I always say I understand understand why they do it but it's like imagine thinking of like yo let's just come up with something new even though the idea has been done before but you 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 put your all into something to create something new because you really believe in it and then it just like it concords <laughs> and then it then it concords you know the games just started to hop from console uh, to console without any significant changes being made. These ported over versions were just that. What the ports. fuck? You'd be hard what pressed to that? find somebody who made. These ported over versions what were game just is this? ports. You'd be hard pressed like, to find somebody Sonic who is that? The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess on the Wii, a remake of the GameCube version, especially considering the fact that they were released alongside each other. If a game is old enough, or if a company wants to make some free money, then you get a remaster, an upgraded version of the original with graphical enhancements 
weapons, and maybe even some quality of life changes, mm -hmm. which in concept is great. Not yeah. every game ages so gracefully. No. Some design decisions end up feeling archaic, and some controls feel clunky. Also, but camera work is the biggest thing, bro. The remaster, developers can revisit old games and fix up parts that were lacking due to things like time constraints or technical limitations. No matter how much you hate change, I think there are some things we can agree are definite improvements. If a game has long loading screens, most folks aren't going to miss that in a remaster. Most. Not what game is this? All. People get sentimental about quite literally everything. Me personally, I still love to get physical media and play games on original hardware, Hello? even when it's not the most convenient option. A couple years back... Gravity Rush. What the fuck is that? That shit looks fire. Is that on Steam? Crazy. Back, I picked up copies of the first two Kingdom Hearts games, dusted off the old PS2 Slim, and even finessed a CRT TV from my grandma to get the full early 2000s experience. I got a few hours in before dying to a boss, resetting at a checkpoint, and realizing you can't skip cutscenes in this game. Oh, ever. No, I forgot I turned about that. Shit that. Off with the quickness and bought the HD remaster collection. On paper, remasters should be the best version of their respective games, but not all remasters are created equally. More often than not, you just get what's basically a port with minimal enhancements, I'm usually tired. HD graphics and 60 FPS if you're lucky. Any excuse to add re something to the title is a good one, because it's far better for marketing than just saying the same exact game you played but with a new price tag. That yeah. just got me fucked up thinking I'm gonna pay sixty dollars for an additional thirty FPS. That's Two dollars per frame per second, and it's rarely ever the games that really need the remaster that get them. Marvel Spider-Man dropped in 2018 and got remastered just two years later. That's Not insane. Not much was enhanced because make sense. there wasn't much to enhance. It got ray tracing, faster load times, and compatibility with Sony's. Yo, Spider-Man's such a good, like, good, such a good game, bro. Two seventy dollar vibrator. When compared side Duh. by side, you can definitely see a difference with the remaster. But nobody was asking for this, and it was made purely to be bundled. They with Miles nailed Morales these swinging mechanics. Sold as Holy shit! Title for the PS5. Because as we all Look know, PS5 ain't got no games. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit is a 2010 reboot of a 1998 game that was remastered for 8th gen consoles and PC. It includes all the DLC, introduced crossplay, and enhanced the visuals. At, at least that's what it says on the box. Fuck it, let's get a Need for Speed, uh, uh, Need for Speed Underground re remaster. They actually reuse the same car models. Some textures look marginally better and some look outright worse, but most things look the same as they ever did. EA also shoehorns their own launcher into their Steam releases. A lot of major publishers do. Cause you Bro, know I played the I played the hell out of most wanted on my Steam Deck. I'm not gonna lie. I want I still want that need for speed underground. That was like my child like that was my childhood, bro. I that was my childhood. Most Wanted is so fire though. Every PC player loves launching a launcher to launch another launcher to launch the game that they want to play. At least with PC games, we have the option to go back and buy the original at a cheaper price. <laughs> you can't keep getting away with it! The most egregious kind of re-release is the- Hey man, get your money up, not your money up. <clears throat> placement, new version- Let's play a Need for Speed. Just dropped, remove the old game from all digital storefronts. That would be different though, like play, to play a racing game on the gaming channel. When a game is remastered for the latest console generation, it makes sense why that'd be the only- But bro, the, the, good, the best experience for that though, is like the music too, while racing. I would have to turn that shit off if I wanted to put it on YouTube version available on those platforms they're not going to release a port alongside the remaster but on pc where the brand new releases are going to be sharing shelf space along with the old ones there's no good reason to delist that version especially with single player games rockstar notoriously released a remaster no, i don't i don't have a wheel compilation of gta games with character models that look significantly we're watching alien new rockstar we yo we can i'm definitely down to watch that the new rockstar alien breakdown person they did on the ps2 play persona pro i I heard that game is long as hell and also ill. <laughs> Yuck. Yuck. 
Bro, that game is long as hell. I feel like it would definitely be something I'd probably be into. I don't know, but like a hundred hours. Yeah. What is it even about? Like I probably played on my Steam Deck, but that's a, that's a, that's long, man. Remove the original games from stores and crack down on fan made. No, long games are the best for like leisure, like 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 personally, but like stream wise, work wise, YouTube upload wise, that shit's a nightmare. Mods to make their new version the only way to access these titles. Calling a game the definitive edition is always a bold move. Telling players, hey, this is the best way to experience this thing, like they can't make that decision for themselves. If a re release really is that good, the community will naturally migrate to that version, but both games should be supported until that happens, mm. for the most part. But it's a lot more understandable to stop supporting a game with 20 active players than cutting it off the very moment you drop some new shit. Nintendo as a company is allergic to two things, good PR decisions and supporting their legacy content. Super Smash Bros. Melee is one of the most beloved fighting games to ever exist, and the only way to play it yes. legally is Says to who? own a 22 year old disc and console. While technically not remasters, Smash sequels effectively serve the same purpose. They have the same character roster, plus dozens more, over a hundred new and old stages, updated graphics. From Nintendo's point of view, why would you ever want to play Melee when you can just cop that new new for $59.99? The Virtual Console was a solid way to experience what old titles it offered, but that all disappeared when Nintendo closed the eShop earlier this year, and no game series suffered quite like Pokemon. With both the 3DS and Wii U losing their digital stores, Another 33% of all Pokemon games were made unavailable to purchase through official avenues. Why? You either gotta sell your soul to a reseller or set sail for the One Piece. These games basically never get ported over to modern platforms. Instead, they get the most divisive kind of re-release. The remake. Remakes are also the most loosely defined, with some more closely resembling a remaster and others being complete reimaginings. They're rebuilt from the ground up in a new engine with new assets, new voice acting, and rearranged and reorchestrated music. Remakes can be a great way to revisit old games you've already played. I'd be pissed if my shit looked like this still recapturing that sense of experiencing something for the first time. While I had a lot of fun with some of the modern Pokemon remakes, and others I more so tolerated, I wouldn't call any of them a replacement for the originals, but that's exactly how Nintendo treats them. As I mentioned earlier, there are some changes that can pretty much be agreed upon as objectively good. Most mythical Pokemon are only obtainable through in-person events. Although events are good because they get gamers to leave the damn house, they also make these Pokemon unavailable to players outside of- God, Yo, the way y'all are saying that is like- it seems weird, but God, I love emulating. Like, that just sounds like it's, you shouldn't be saying it. Certain regions and unavailable to everyone after a certain time period. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire took God, the God, I'm access, emulating right now. Event only, <laughs> and I'm in emulating game, as we which speak. Which is a great change all around. But Pokemon remakes also have changes like mandatory XP share, altered catching mechanics, and affection, among other contentious things that draw a clear line yeah, between the remakes up. and the OGs. I don't think that remakes are always cash grabs, but it's pretty damn easy to identify when one is. I don't Tell have me, I What is your purpose? Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should. The Last of Us Part <laughs> One has no reason to exist. The original released in 2013 for the PS3 and got remastered a year later for the PS4. Eight years after that, we got a PS5 remake yeah. where everything was rebuilt from the ground up, especially that price tag. The remake is graphically superior, but the remaster absolutely still holds up. If any game has an original release, remake, and remaster all within a decade time span, that's a pretty clear red flag. Yeah. Not a single person alive was asking for this. Yep. Sony just wanted to have a new $70 release to coincide with the television series. It's no coincidence that's the version that got ported to PC. Nor is it a coincidence that it was ported just two weeks after the show's season finale. Much like what Sony did with Spider-Man, the Demon Souls remake was made purely to sell PS5s. It was a vehicle to show how powerful the console was, so graphics were prioritized over everything. Too much was changed artistically to consider it a remaster, and not enough was changed mechanically to say it's a complete reimagining of the 2009 game. But that oh. shit look fire though. A pre-order bone. I don't even like that, like, that type of game. But even I thought it was it looked cool. My favorite part of FromSoft games. Despite the cynical approach to the remake, I personally enjoyed it a lot. Granted, I never played the original game, but for the same people who did, I can get why they might not like this version. Yeah. With the massive portion of the audience for any remake being fans of the original, nostalgia is naturally going to play a huge role in how that remake is received. There's a reason why we get remakes of beloved. Oh, this was the first ever Souls game. 
good classics like RE4 and not uh, Mr. Mosquito for the PS2. That existing audience is guaranteed money, but it it's an actual game. Yo, chat, I would literally play that. Mr. Mosquito, like, you just go around biting people. Also guarantees a group of players <laughs> will complain about any minor deviation. There that are is content. There are a ton of valid things to criticize about remakes, but you occasionally see the odd complaint, like, what the is NPC this? Bumble is to criticize about remakes, but you occasionally see the odd complaint, like, the NPC Chat, what's that? A ton of valid things to criticize about Near, I've heard about that. Remakes, people have been telling me about that. You occasionally see the odd complaint, like the NPC Bumblefuck McNobody got his hair color changed from brown to black. I wanted to avoid those kinds of criticisms and approach a remake without any nostalgia clouding my judgment. So that's exactly what I did with one particular game that I want to take a closer look at. Remake a game. Final Fantasy 7 is a classic that I'd never played. It was a game I had on the I, back. I want to, bro. See, I've been trying to, and get this, get this. I've been wanting to replay this original game for the longest, and I've tried so many different ways, and some somehow throughout the game, the process, something fucks up. Something fucks up. Rico got me this device that can play like, like so many PlayStation games. And luckily this was one of the games that was up there, bro. I made it to like the final, like the final oh, disc. And the emulator just, Lol, God, it just, I love it just bugged out, bro. Is hilarious. It's bugged out. The value in emulation is game preservation and the ability to have a game run better on more powerful hardware without having to pay again after buying it I once. I tried on Steam. Plus you don't have to buy it either. You can use own ROMs. I tried on Steam, but like I, the controls don't work. Like I can't use the controller, or like the uh the you know. I don't know what's going on with it. And I did all the thing where you switch it to to prioritize the controller and shit, and it wasn't working. The PS Store has it, but it's like I wanted to play it like in leisure. I don't want to have to sit here and you know sit at be at be in the in my office to play the game. I wanted to like be in bed or like, you know, when I'm on the plane or some shit like that. So it's just, oh my gosh, I just can't, I, I just want to play through the game and I've done it. I've played, replayed through this game after making it to like this three, three times, three times, bro. And I just can't complete it. It sucks. I did get the PS portal. I gave it to Timmy. Burner for the longest time, but for one reason or another, I never got around to it. If you've ever touched a PlayStation, it'd be hard to have never heard of Final Fantasy. Especially yeah, yo, shout out to the, shout out to our parents, cause it's like I don't know about y'all, but do y'all remember ever asking for the games that y'all played a lot of the times when you played these games when you were younger? I don't know how, but. I, my mom, bro, my mom's, she must have seen commercials or some shit like that, suggestions, but a lot of the games that I had and played, I did not ask for. I just had them. Seven. It's gone far past just being a game and has seeped into mainstream pop culture. As a fan of games and a Final Fantasy was definitely one of them because I was not, I was not looking to play no Final Fantasy when I was younger, when I seen commercials. I was not like asking to play that member of the Italian Senate. I'm obviously familiar with the main cast of characters and bits and pieces of the story, but definitely not enough to be nostalgic about them. I went into the original largely blind and came out of it with a new game in my list of all-time favorites. Same, bro. I, I thought the game was cool because like how thick the, the, the fucking CD disc was. I was like, why are the, uh, the cover or whatever the, the case was? I was like, why is the case so thick? Put it in, bro. Have play you that played shit all the night. Borderlands series? Uh -uh. Would you ever consider playing them on stream? I don't it know. It could be an amazing love from Finland. Heart six. Yo, shout out to Finland, bro. Thank you for the donation. I I never played it, and then like the movie, that movie shit. Like I seen the trailer, and it's not real. That shit is not helping me want to be like you know play that shit. <laughs> it has it has not shown me any interest in like why what is so good about it. Not even a day later, I dove straight oh came out of God, it with a new at, game in my list of all-time favorites. Not even a Oh my gosh, bro. 
day later, I dove straight into the remix before the rose-tinted glasses could set in to see how it compares. FF7 is nearly three decades old at this point, and the mind-blowing 3D visuals of the late 90s aren't going to seem so impressive to a modern audience. To me and other people who enjoy playing old games, the original art is still uniquely charming, but as with most remakes, the graphics are the first thing to be rebuilt. 7 Remake is non-stop eye candy. Hmm. I'm not an old head who shakes his fist and complains about those darn realistic graphics. They have their place and offer unique strengths. The yeah, I heard about Bayonetta too. Like, it, a lot of these things that I've heard, like especially especially hack and slash games, I want to eventually get to. Um, so I just, you know, I just gotta find the right time to do it. Modern Unreal Engine approach brings Midgard to life in ways that were previously impossible. Everything from the opening to the first boss fight was perfection. After the mission- Oh my god, I'll never forget that demo and then the demo ending and just waiting, wanting to play like the first, like the actual game, bro. Bring your way back to the slums. Oh first... my god, the memories chat. I literally play like 17 hours. Next day, 11 hours. Next day, like bro oh my gosh that was back at my i think i was in my second apartment then through the wreckage caused by the bomb you see the pain and hear the cries of the people directly impacted by your actions the remake does a better job of making avalanche morally gray and humanizing the folks topside when you're down in the slums you can look up and see that big ass pizza in the Play sky the witch you walk past on your steam deck it is a built-in card game in it too i know you like those you fucking nerd what NPCs and hear them having full-on conversations with each other that elicit this feeling of sonder. The world feels lived in and interconnected, oh but gosh. with hyper-realism, immersion is broken much harder when the cracks do start to show. NPCs are obviously going to have finite voice lines and have to loop at some point. Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? Wait, what the... Huh, that's weird. Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? Now, when you run down an alley and literally everybody would start talking. Uh-oh. Okay. Why don't you learn to take a hit? Unique designs <laughs> will also be finite and have to be reused to repopulate crowds. In Sector 5, nah, you'll see the, the same segment? exact woman in a crowd near the center of the town, approaching that same crowd near the center of the town, sitting at a table a few meters away, eating some air sandwiches and drinking some oxygen brewskis with the homies, then over here in this alleyway trying to get some kids to stop playing on the roof and find- Ah, uh, who cares, man? Who cares? I'm not gonna lie. I think the craziest thing, though, graphic-wise, was that damn door was that damn door of the hotel it's like everything looks good and then you got that that shitty ass door that it just would not like load in and then some of the flowers too finally one more block down trying to get the perfect squat form these kinds of inconsistencies are much easier to forgive or simply ignore with the more abstract stylized art styles the new approach is an outright better or worse why would you want to do that seven's combat also saw a complete overhaul turn-based rpgs are far from dead but they aren't as prominent as they once were what is this Oh, Persona. Wait, that's a it's a turn based game. Oh, my head itches. Oh, that's fire. Were. Old mechanics like random encounters are slowly being phased out of RPGs in favor of something more interactive, and it was obvious that Remake would do something similar. It tries to marry classic turn-based Final Fantasy with modern real-time action. Of course, FF7 wouldn't be FF7 without ATB, Materia, and Limit Breaks, and each of these elements were rebuilt to fit the new combat system. They did an amazing ATB job. now only dictates when each character can use spells, abilities, and items. You're free to move around and use basic attacks whenever. The ATB gauge slowly fills up over time like before, but you can fill it up faster by attacking. Limit breaks, status effects, and enemy weaknesses are left largely unchanged and are still as potent as they were in the original. I've heard people calling the game hack and slashy with damage sponges for enemies, and while you can certainly play it like that, you'd be shooting yourself in the foot. As with any good combat system, it's ultimately what you make of it. You can mm -hmm. power through ignoring weaknesses and only using the most basic moves, yeah. sure. But you'll encounter a lot more resistance from the game and probably have less fun than if you were to fully interact with all of the mechanics the game offers you. The combat is super flexible. Bro, you organizing and switching the materials like, like, uh, one of the fun parts 
about the game. The ton of different strategies. Despite the real-time action, just like in the original, most of your decision making is done in the menu by playing around with your balls. The game's basic dodge roll is pitiful. It has no iframes and doesn't cover enough distance to be a reliable way to Souls -like game. avoid attacks. I get the feeling that to keep in line with the hybrid turn-based concept, they wanted to place a greater emphasis on strategizing rather than dodging everything like it's Dark Souls, considering you can't move at all in turn-based combat. And again, this is something that can be mitigated with the proper setup. If you want a Bro. perfect parry attacks or solo no-hit super bosses with your favorite character, with the right loadout and strategy, you can. Mm -hmm. Another way the remake reimagines turn-based elements is by having the enemy AI always focus whichever character you're controlling, while the AI for your party members is brain dead. This forces you to constantly shuffle between all three characters to build and spend their ATB. That, you can't just stick to one character and have to that issue is so commands far. to that, each like, party that's member one of directly, my favorite like parts about the it. original. It's that not the first so game to try a hybrid turn-based real-time system, but I think it's definitely the best executed. I get why some people would still prefer for something purely turn-based, but anybody saying this combat system has no depth is lying to you. You're lying. The most polarizing changes in the remakes have to be the ones made to the story. The best parts of remake is that it expands on the original story. The worst part of remake is that it expands on the original story. Let's start with the good. Like mm, I mentioned before, the remake gets a lot more message. to humanize the villains, so they actually seem like characters. The main cast also got some new scenes and dialogue where they bounce off each other better than they ever have before. The game has incredibly strong everybody a, a lot of not everybody but yeah it, it was split me personally i love it because bro I, I i get it i get it i understand because i love i love um i love final fantasy just as much as everybody else but bro isn't it better to play this it like technically it's still the same story but a different one that expands and adds new twist. I feel like it, it just, it's even better, bro. I, and I feel like that's what remakes or like a remake should be. Like when we talk about remakes or like remasters, I feel like there's gotta be a difference, bro. There's, there, there's gotta be a difference. They're, they might need to invent a new word for what the fuck Final Fantasy is doing though. Cause this shit is, this, this shit is different. Characterization. The writers understand exactly what makes these characters so loved, and they're at their absolute best in Remake. Many games and other minor scenes I didn't expect to see remade were still carried over. Granted, some changes had to be made to a better appeal to- Cause this shit is a remake, but it's a, continu it's a continuation. It's literally like, you play through the, the original, and then you play this one, and it's a, it, it's a continuation modern sensibilities wait wait what, what what are you doing i still don't believe remake should qualify for game of the year but it's not really a remake it's not even really a remake it's it's like it's something like it's different dude i can't explain it <laughs> it's so hard to explain bro wait tifa tifa no don't say it don't do it it's don't. like yes it's the same story but it's not the same story, dude. Cancel you. <laughs> you spend more time with minor characters like Jesse, so that when she uh, when she dies, you actually feel something. Reimagining. She, she does die, right? What game are you talking about? The game on the screen, man. Final Fantasy, bro. It's like, bro. Well, that's up in the air because I, I don't know. The remake is not one for one uh, recreation of Final Fantasy. For about 70% of the game, you're going to be playing through a faithful recreation of the original story. The other 30% is split between completely new content or blatant padding trying to pass off as new content. Remember how I said everything was perfect up until the first boss fight? That's because right after that, we see Sephiroth, a character we're not supposed to encounter for several more hours. That's what I love, bro! I'm glad it wasn't just the same game uh, again. And I, yo, they got everyone. They got everybody in with that demo. They got everybody with that demo. Everybody was like, yo, oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is cool. It's literally, yo, oh my God, wait, this might be a banger. Then they play it and then Sephiroth pops up and you're like, wait, what the? No, what, what, what's going on here? And then it's like, now you're really locked in because you're confused. And then the whispers show up and you're like, what is happening? 
Bro. Sephiroth was built up endlessly in the original. For most of the game, you don't even see him, but instead see the sometimes literal trail of blood that follows wherever he goes. And this is the thing, people were getting mad because we've seen Sephiroth so early. My nigga, you've already played the game. It's literally a remake. Like, we all know what Sephiroth looked like. Like, what, like, what do you mean? If he would have popped up the same time that he popped up in, in, in the OG, it's not That's like really they called it rebirth thunk. Cra it's not really crazy. It's like, it's not like a, oh my God, it's Sephiroth. I feel like everybody was like, oh my God, it's Sephiroth. When he popped out when he wasn't supposed to. And then the story just started changing dis different directions. That's what makes this so fire. Cause now it's like, we're, ba we're, we're replaying a game that we loved so much with the same beats, but like extra beats. So it's like, we're still getting that like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? That's exciting. The same enemies you struggle with, he kills in one blow. The power gap between you and the big bad- I'm glad I don't know what's gonna happen at the end. Cause we, we all know what happens at the end of the, of, the, of the OG. But now I have no idea what's gonna happen. And now we're fighting alongside Zack, which would never happen if we just followed the same footsteps as the original. Sephiroth is constantly reinforced by the story and gameplay, making it hit that much harder when you finally do fight him. But in the remake, he shows up every other minute to flirt with his favorite twink. I am your everything. Isn't that what you want? Don't deny me. Embrace me. A touching reunion. I'm waiting, Cloud. After the first boss, we're also introduced to the plot ghosts, the physical manifestation of the planet's will to stick to the story of the original game. No, I'm, I'm not making this up. They show up whenever something goes off course and try to steer it back. The game concludes with you defeating the plot ghost and opening up the future to endless possibilities. These ghosts are a not so subtle metaphor for the pressure from fans to adhere to the original story. Of I like Final that Fantasy metaphor VII. though. And the writers use this as a vehicle for meta commentary on the nature of remakes and reimagining an iconic piece of art. I really like that, While bro. the execution is. And I really love how they make you fight. I, I love how you they make you fight the people who want the game to just stay on the same storyline. You literally fight through it. I, I, lo I love how they did that. I'm fisted to say the least. I find my. Yo. Oh. Oh, yeah. Super wings. Myself agreeing with the creative team's desire to deviate because the remake isn't trying to replace the first game. Through playing the game, this being my first introduction to Final Fantasy VII was amazing. It made me want to learn more. Oh, this is your first. Oh, Demir's Demir's crying. No, oh, he's he's uh missing me. 
game, it's evident that 7 Remake is intended to be more of a companion piece to the original than anything. It's littered with references and callbacks to the first game and the media surrounding it. It heavily relies on players having existing knowledge of the original events. This is a game for the fans. They didn't spend any time building up Sephiroth because the target audience has already experienced Exactly. That. The cat's been out of the bag for over two decades, and there was no recapturing that same And I feel like even if you never really played the games, you still knew who he was. ...feeling of tension. But what about new fans? A common criticism I hear about remakes is that, regardless of whether they're trying to replace the original or not, they inevitably lead to newcomers choosing to forgo the original in favor of the shiny new game. That many players will have their first experience with a classic game ruined by an inferior version. While there's definitely something to be said about misleading marketing being used to try to capture a new audience, most of those players, and I cannot stress this enough, were never gonna peep that shit in the first place. Yeah. The casual audience doesn't dig through libraries of 30-year-old consoles for gems they may have missed. Yeah. They want that shiny new version. For anybody who does care about getting the authentic experience, it should be immediately clear that a modern Unreal Engine action RPG is naturally going to produce a very different experience no matter how faithful they try to adapt the if story. If you've seen Advent Children, Sephiroth just disappears somewhere. So the Seph we see in Remake slash Rebirth is most likely that Sephiroth and is just fucking with Cloud. The brain static cloud gets is the same noise effect from the disease from AC2. I heard about, uh, I heard about that stuff. Like I seen, uh, like a video on, uh, talking about that. Those who care to see where it all started are going to go back and pick up the first game. In fact, it was seeing the remake that ultimately pushed me to pull FF7 from the backlog. But with a game I never had interest in playing, like Dead Space, I jumped in with the 2023 version. Survival horror was never something that clicked with me, but I surprisingly had fun with that remake. Because of that, I wanted to try out some other games in that genre. And just a couple months later, the remake for Resident Evil 4 dropped, which everyone seemed to love. I, I wouldn't know, I, I never played it. Same. I chose to buy the original before diving into the remake because that's something I'm interested in experiencing both versions of. Yeah, you better than me. I don't like, I, I, I don't, if something new comes out, I do not want to play the old version uh, because camera angle or c camera angles and camera controls and, and shit like that, bro. If it's a game Hell I care no. about, I'm going to go back and play the original. I, I don't know, maybe I'm the weird one. But I find it hard to believe that there's some epidemic of gamers who wanted to- I definitely get it. Like, if there's a trailer for something, like, uh, like when we seen that new trailer for the Gears of War or something, I never played the first Gears, so it's like, I would go back and play that. But, like, if it's already out, if a new one's already out, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting, I'm just gonna play that. I'm not gonna go back to the backlog. Play an old game, but instead get their cherry pop by- That's what I'm saying, bro. Remember when you- I don't know if that's the game, but like, wasn't there a game when you walk and the camera only moves when you walk into a different room? Like, who the fuck want to do that shit, man? I mean, remake, especially with games that are so readily available. Both FF7 and RE4 are available on current and last gen console. Oh my gosh, I did not understand this shit at all, bro. I did not understand this shit at all when I was younger. They've been released on PC. That level. iOS and Android. Resi 4 is even on the Zebo. What's a Zebo? Fuck if I know, but the game's on there. These so, remakes aren't replacing the old ones, so it doesn't matter to me if they're not one for one recreations. A remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 was announced just last week during Sony's PlayStation Showcase. Now, I don't trust Konami to not fumble this remake. Luckily, they also revealed that they'd be releasing a collection of the first three games on PS5. Now, it would be really cool if the remake was a fresh new take on the game that was also fun, but it could also be an isometric turn-based battle royale slash dating sim. I honestly couldn't care less because those original games are being preserved for a modern audience. Remakes will never be the same exact game. Even if that's what the creators set out to make, because there will always be something off about the new game that alienates some fans. And the more time passes before something is remade, the more any modern attempt to recreate it is naturally going to deviate. FF7 Wait, remake why did that have many dislikes? More game that Soul versus Soulless. Alienates some fans. And the more time passes, because there will always be something off about the new game that alienates some fans. And the more time passes before something is remade, the more any modern attempt to recreate it is naturally going to deviate. FF7 Remake saw many of the key staff members from the first game returning. The original director, Yoshinori Kitase, was now the producer, whereas the role of director was taken over by Tetsuya Nomura, who did the original character designs and helped write the story. This guy is not known for his strong writing or subtlety. 
He's also the director for Kingdom Hearts, so when fans saw a remake go off the rails with metatextual ghosts and parallel dimensions, they were quick to put the blame on him. The remake could have been saved if Nomura wasn't the director. He ruined the story with his convoluted writing, and the rest of the staff just slurped at whatever terrible ideas he shat out. We do indeed keep on slurping it up, as you say. Hey yo, what the fuck? In actuality, his contributions to the remake was instrumental in preserving much of the story that fans know and love. Mm. In a 2020 interview, but fans are so stupid they just want to get mad and like you know fuck them suck a dick now the third one's now now the third one's already coming coming out so stay mad bro <laughs> stay mad play the ogs bro head staff it was revealed that it was yoshinori kitase who actually wanted to make more drastic changes to the story but it was nomura and his co-director hamaguchi who dialed things back people are so Similarly, fake during development of I the original game humans. it was nomura's input that gave us one of the most iconic scenes in video games instead of whatever the hell this is that they were planning. Nomura has been something of a scapegoat for FF fans to blame for whatever the hell this Or having the mirror cry when you leave is so cute. It's high time you leave that lil nigga. He getting mad soft now. Got to introduce hardship. <laughs> Lol JK. Seeing uh, that, I can't understand how a nigga can just literally walk away from their family. Yeah, I don't understand. Thanks, Pops. I don't understand how people do that either and this is just this is just one child bro niggas be walking away from i'm talking about like three kids four kids like, like it's insane bro like yeah it's a lot of work but damn my nigga you produce the you produce this life like what the fuck it's not like this shit was just sprung on you, man. You knew what you was doing, bitch. This is that they were planning. Nomura has been something of a scapegoat for FF fans to blame for everything they don't like about the series. But the remake going in a different direction wasn't something born out of contempt for the source material or a desire to overwrite it. This wasn't a situation where a new adaptation is passed off to the B team or a separate studio who specializes in remakes. This was largely the same team that created the first. Oh, is that what happened with that 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 first Souls game? The people who made the game didn't even do have nothing to do with it. It just went to people who are good with remaking shit. That's kind of now. That's kind of crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I would be pissed. Holy shit, that's fucked up. Game and it definitely shows. You can't end up making a product like this. I would rather my favorite game just not be remade if we just gonna do that. But still, I thought I thought it was pretty. I thought it was cool though without having a deep understanding and respect for the original property. No other group of people were better equipped to retell this story, but things still ended up going the way they did because even those same people are no longer the same people they were two decades ago. Mm -hmm. They've worked on many other games since then, gotten new inspirations, new experiences. The cultural context in which the original game was released can't be replicated. Yeah. What was groundbreaking back then no longer is today. Yeah. Those goofy yet charming Roblox field models were a result of the developers' inexperience with 3D. If 7 released just a couple years later when they had gotten some more experience, we could have gotten something that looked very different. Personal struggles especially can have a profound effect on art. Yeah. Final Fantasy creator Hironobu Sakaguchi has said that Seven's theme of life was something that he'd been thinking about ever since his mother passed when he was working on Final Fantasy 3, and Seven was the first time that this theme was really brought to the forefront. That headspace isn't something that can be recreated. A one-for-one -one mm. remake built from the ground up is an impossible task because no one can catch lightning in a bottle twice. I think that remakes should explore new themes and ideas, and it'd be a waste not to. I didn't like Seven Remake as much as the original, but I still enjoy being able to play a game with well-realized versions of these characters I already know and love. The sequel could still end up- I don't think it's trying to be better than the original. abandoned the fam and went on to have another family dog. I'm laughing just thinking about it. Nigga said I'd like to return these lil niggas and do a swap. Nigga treated the fam like a GameStop <laughs> trade-in. The thing with this, I, they're not trying to be better than original. If anything, they're- this game- is something that is made to make you want to play the original. That's that's how that's how I feel about it. End up being a pile of hot garbage, but as long as the original remains accessible on modern platforms, revisiting that game will always be an option. A bad remake isn't going to reach into my head and retroactively ruin my love for the first game. It can and should be something that stands on its own, because ultimately, it doesn't matter if a remake is faithful. It just matters if it's good. That's what I think anyways. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. And thank you to the folks at brilliant.org for sponsoring this. Yo, good video. Holy shit, this is a good ass video. Um, yeah, I feel like the point of a remake, um, or I don't even know, not, I don't even know the word, bruh. 
but i feel like if you're gonna redo a game and you still have like the old og game available like it would it should make people want to actually play the og game that's how i kind of feel with movies like if you put out a movie based on a game or something it should make you want to play the game or something like that um but you know what do i know what do i know man okay you played this